Hello, radio family around the world. This is the Quantum Life exclusively on Covenant Radio, live on the airwaves. I remain your host, Shagun Cadmus, that is Cadmus with a C, not a K. Of course, I always start with this statement. The God that is in you is greater than anything else around the world. At the same time, I need to say Happy New Year. This is the year 2024. A lot of people, you have New Year resolutions. A lot of people, you have goals and dreams and things you want to accomplish in the year 2024. But when it comes to the Quantum Life series, we are going to focus on one particular thing that we all have in common. Money. Yes, you heard me right. Money is in common with every single person. In fact, a, a wise man, I call him a wise man, made this statement, which I find to be very, very true. He said, money is like a current. It keeps moving. Money moves towards you and money moves away from you, whether you like it or not. It is a harsh reality, but it is very, very true. If you don't understand that you are a magnet, people who are exceptionally successful have found a way for money to move towards them more and away from them less. Let me say that again. Wisdom is the principal thing. What is wisdom? God's way of handling a situation if God was in your shoes. So it simply means if God wants to handle money, God understands how the money should come to you more and away from you less. Something else that God always refers to is, you don't need to start anything by yourself. Whatever it is that you're about to start, there's a likelihood somebody else has done it before you. So take the time to learn from other people. And that's what we're going to do on this Quantum Life series. We are going to learn from a person who understands the system of money. But don't take my word for it. Let me give you a little bit about her background because she's actually here in the studio. So very, very quickly, because I'm going to mention her name, but let me tell you a little bit about her background because they say whoever it is that's about to advise you on something must qualify. Talk is cheap, but once a person qualifies, pay attention to everything the person says. So let me read a little bit about what the person has actually accomplished over her lifetime. And it's a her. Yes, believe it or not, it's a her. Please listen. She is a distinguished professional that holds a bachelor's degree in electronic and electrical engineering. You go, wait a minute. Electronic and electrical engineering and the person is talking about money? Believe it or not, I was as shocked <laughs> as you are right now listening to me from all around the world. But let's continue. She studied at the University of Ilori, Nigeria. She boasts multiple international certifications in process management, including Scrum Master. ITIL, along with training in project management, Lean Six Sigma, she's a black belt and certified business analyst. The, for over 18 years, there's several things she has done, but the thing that actually got my attention again is she was one of the people who got the top career women in Nigeria in 2022 and 9 to 5 Chicks top 50 women management in Africa. 2023. You go, ah, okay, okay. Who is this person? And she wrote a book. She wrote a book because it's a book series they are into right now. She wrote a book and the name of the book is Where is the Money? Practical Tips to Attract Money to Yourself. So it is my pleasure and honor to invite to our studio here. She came all the way from Abuja. So you can see you guys are very, very important. She came all the way from Abuja for this incident. Where is the money? Practical tips to attract money to yourself. It is my honor to present to you the one and only Mrs. Ade Koju Oluwa to me, Nino. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, let us please all welcome. I'm going to clap whether you guys like it or not. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. It's, it's a pleasure for, for you to be in our midst. It wasn't easy getting you down here. As you said, not, nothing, nothing of value comes cheap and nothing of value comes easy. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Cardmod with the C. <laughs> thank you for that glowing um, welcome. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. So let's, let's get right to it because we're discussing about money. Because in the year 2024, I assure you, 
if people don't have what they call financial intelligence, they are going to be in trouble. As they say, one of the main reasons why businesses fold up, why people lose their careers, why marriages are not working too particularly well. There are many factors, but when you look at it, one of those factors is lack of financial intelligence. And now in her book, because there are several things she addressed, we are going to make reference to all the things that she addressed in the book based on the time frame that we have right now. So one of the things that got my attention in the book that she's written called Where is the Money? She talked about the myths of money. Different things. And what they mean about myths is different mindsets that people have as regards money. You see, believe it or not, we are all programmed to think a certain way. Whether you like it or not, consciously or unconsciously. For the fact that you're eating with a knife, a fork, and a spoon, it came with programming. For the fact that you are reading, you're going to school, you're talking a particular way, you have certain manners, it's programming. They said the same programming has to do with money. So please, let's, let's talk about a, a couple of myths that that's actually is responsible for people's lack of financial intelligence. But let me go with this statement. Here's the first question. Is it true that we actually are programmed the wrong way when it comes to money? And then why do you think people have ended in that form of programming? Okay, thank you. Very interesting question and quite broad. And I would say yes. When a child is born, mm. when you have a child, the child is born as a clean slate. Clean slate, exactly. The environment cultures and produces that child. I'll be speaking a lot about myself because mm. everything I've written is on personal experiences, both for myself and things that I've been able to guide people through. So I get quite emotional when I'm talking about money mm. and talking about those principles. So I came from a slightly below average family. Wow. We would have been average, but <laughs> my dad decided to play El Shaddai. So things <laughs> were not enough in the family. So I grew up seeing lack on the living with lack literally and growing up you just heard my profile being read i kept telling myself there's something not correct about the life i'm living i remember having a conversation with an uncle while i was quite young had same conversation hmm. with my mother and they go like oh this is where we are or this is who we are and who said we are like this. Why are we like, no, 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 please understand your lot in life. And I said, no, this cannot be my lot. I'm emphasizing this for the audience because a lot of us have heard things from people we respect. Wow. And because repetition brings conviction, hmm. you believe that that is where you are. As the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so, so is he. So when you accept the lies that they tell you, you are middle class, who said wow. so? Wow. You are behind, hmm. who said so? Who told you all of these things? You need to manage who said so. One of the hmm. money myths that I had to personally break, I, I, I was telling my younger sister that, I had to commit murder. Like, I had to <laughs> kill. Yes, I'm very serious because after this session, a version of you must die. Wow. That's why Apostle Paul will say, I die daily. Wow. If you are not dying, you are not living. Hmm. I realized that when I go into stores, automatically, I go into where they are doing discounted sales, where things are cheap, because my mind has been wired that you only go for cheap things. And when you have that kind of wiring in your mind, you will not be able to produce ideas that will bring you millions. The ideas we produce is ideas that would put you on discount shelves. My and when goodness. I now realized that this was a faulty programming that was put inside me, and the people that are buying premium, they do not have 10 heads. I they said, don't do have you 10 know heads. What? Uh -huh. 
I break this. I kill hmm. the version of Tumilino that believes that she only deserves discounted items and she can only buy things when it is 10% off. Now, am I saying be extravagant? No. No, no. Yeah. But when you have this mindset, there's a mindset that opens you up for abundance because you believe in yourself. There is a mindset that does not allow you to live that life of hmm. barely enough. Enough. You start getting ideas. You, you dare to believe. I'll be, we're talking about my book. I'll be speaking about my book and that the mindset that would give an engineer the audacity to write about finance and i was not only writing about money i said this book is going to impact lives yes. and in two weeks of launching the book we did over a thousand copies wow five countries and lives are being blessed wow. because i dared to believe so it's 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 a mindset it's if our country is going to be better, if our continent is going to be better, you need to believe in yourself hmm. that you can. I'm going to round up with something that's currently trending. Tribe of Judah, I had the privilege of watching the movie three days ago. And I said this to challenge somebody. There are no barren lands. There are only barren minds. Because the sorry, say that again. There are no barren lands. There, there are, are only, only barren, barren minds. minds. Wow. The lady mm. did over a billion in the same country where you say there's scarcity. Exactly. Funke Akindele. Yes. Funke Akindele. Yes. One of my schoolmates, friend, acquaintance. Shubomi Plumta, she directed Black Book. It topped Netflix. These are women that at least I've had the privilege of watching grow. We are practically hmm. on the same age grade. The only difference is they dared to believe in themselves. They dared to believe that irrespective of what people are saying, my case will be different. My we we have lots. You know, when we say these things, it sounds like cliche. Yes. But unless you believe in it, and I understand the law of everybody around you is having it. But if you believe what everybody is believing, you are going to experience what everybody is experiencing. Hmm. It's a no-brainer. Hmm. But people that dare to think differently... They will do just one movie. It's not two movies. Just one movie. Over just, a billion. Boom. And you are struggling with 50,000. <laughs> if, if, if a lot of you listening to me right now, you can see we've, we've really, really started on a very, very high note. And we've been talking about myths and beliefs. So you say, Cadmus, okay, could you mention some of these myths and some of these belief systems that people have that Mrs. Adepoja actually reflected in her book? Check this out to show you how important this book is. Listen, or in case you fall into this category, check this out. One of the myths is you can't have money and go to heaven. Some people have that belief. Let me read another one for you. So sorry, let me just emphasize <laughs> on that. Honestly, so I grew in a very religious background and hmm. i'm very grateful to it so you hear me quote bible like i can explain bible with everything <laughs> but however they are very poor i wish i can say where hmm. they are very poor and for me those were things that was not hardened up like how will the bible tell me that god is a wealthy god my father is rich in houses and land yes. and I'm his heir and you cannot pay school fees. You can't pay house rent. Oh. You can't eat well. It, it wasn't adding up. And for me, these are things that are burning in my heart that the hmm. most, most of the most religious nations are actually the poorest nation. Hmm. So it does not matter how wealthy your God is until your mind becomes wealthy. Beautiful. God cannot help you. Beautiful. And God will never do for man what man can do for himself. And, you know, Solomon talking, he says, I see a great evil on the earth. The slaves are riding on camels and the princes are walking on bare faith. Hmm. And that is what we are seeing because we do not have this large capacity 
to actually receive. I tell people, God speaks. The fact that you're going to church doesn't mean you have monopoly of God. Wow. God speaks to everybody. And I would want anybody to take me up on it because it's something that I want to debunk our religious mind, not Christian mind, because that mind needs to be re renewed from it so that God can trust us and grow with us. If truly, as the Bible says, all good and all perfect gifts comes, comes from, from God. God. You are listening to me now via technology. How many Christians are inventors? Why is it that we cannot mm. open ourselves to heaven and get this witty ideas? What is it that is blocking our mind? Why is it? Imagine that it is a Christian that developed Twitter. Imagine that it is a Christian wow. that developed WhatsApp. We will be complaining about, about poverty exactly. the way we are complaining about poverty. Imagine that it is a Christian that developed the Zoom app. That app kaboomed during COVID. Why people were busy crying about money. The guy became a billionaire yes. in COVID. And that was simply because he saw opportunities, opportunities in crisis. I'm not digressing, but these are things I'm passionate of about. Of course, please, I've been go ahead. hearing that 2024 is going to be a difficult year. And mm. I tell people I'm excited. Hmm. I'm happy. Why? Because opportunities are born in crisis. Beautiful. If there are no crises, everybody's just going to leave an average life. But when we don't have the understanding of why the crisis is, then we end up being a casualty in the crisis. Not because that is what God meant, but because we did not have understanding. Jesus wept in the Bible. The most popular was when he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. But yes. one of the ones that I find very reflective was when he wept over Jerusalem. The Bible says mm. that Jesus wept over Jerusalem because the time, a time came and she did not make, know it. And I look at 2024, I see a land of opportunities because if we can open up ourselves to with the ideas, we'll be able to bring up solutions that will push us to limelight in the food industry, you know, you're talking about waste, in the technology industry. Imagine that I was a Christian that brought up the concept of social media. Hmm. There are lots <laughs> of inventions that is coming out, but the so-called unbelievers are the ones that are bigger believers. Yes. They are the ones that are seeing opportunity in those things, and we are playing catch-up. Wow. Will there be money? Yes. Because it is currency, it moves. But when you are playing catch-up, you've already lost the first mover's advantage. So it is safe to say one of the first rules to, for money to be attracted to you or for you to be able to attract money is you need to change your mindset. That it is very, very... In fact, I mean, when, when you mentioned all the witty inventions and discoveries and, and titans in industries. Um, there was a conference that took place uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago with uh, Wolfbeck in, in our church. And then our, our pastor, Pastor Poju, actually played a video of um, Pastor Kenneth Copeland that prophesied, and this was about 40 years ago, and that he was wondering at that point in time, how come Christians did not have that kind of financial leverage and the people of the world had it. And he literally went to seek God and that God replied him. And he told us what the reply was. The reply was that God said, he's been holding back all these ideas, holding back all these inventions. And God was looking for who to give. But because the mindsets of quote and unquote, God's kids were not right. They were very myopic. It was not wide. There were no opportunists. And those inventions needed to exist on the earth. God had no choice but to give people who were not his children. And we were all in shock. We're like, what? So all these things, believe it or not, all these big things, God had reserved it for his kids. But because the kids did not have, quote and unquote, the mindset to actually be open to such big, big global things, they were more concerned about what they can eat, drink, wear, their basic necessities, not knowing their bigger things. God had no choice but to make it open to anybody who was open to it. And 90% of those people were people of the world. 
hundred percent correct. I can't hmm. agree more. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. It's not for believers. It's not for a particular sect of people. But when we think that our idea of prosperity and go and look at all these so-called people that are doing big things in the world, their mindset hmm. is different. Hmm. When you speak with a typical person, like an average person, what the person is thinking is, so you go like, oh, if you get money now, what will you do with it? Ah, I will take care of my family. Hmm. I will take care of my immediate. <laughs> so you, you don't have the capacity to be able to receive exponential wealth because exactly. it's all about all capacity. About, you, know. you know, for a man like Bill Gates, hmm. one of his founding visions, and I'm like, how do these people even think <laughs> was a computer in every, every desk home. in every home when you start having that kind of dream your wiring your programming will be different but when your thinking is to have the biggest house ah, in your village oh, oh. The, limitation <laughs> the limitations is going to be there and as you rightly said sir which is true and that is why i so believe in this wealth thing that God is looking for people to partner with. And mm. when God understood that he could partner with Bill Gates, and nations is going to be blessed but through him. He had no choice but to give it to him. Give it to him. So it's, it's, it's that simple. So when you are thinking, what would I do? The question is, how many lives beyond you, Thank you. will it bless? Thank you. When we start thinking that way and god is an investor so one of the things i said in my book and i'm being very practical god is an investor the devil whether you like it or not is an investor and for both forces one of my mentors he actually forwarded the book dr moses Fagwemi. he will tell you you cannot be exponentially rich without being in covenant with one of the forces in the world wow because that's that's the truth money makes things happen Whoever owes money dictates control. Hmm. It is that simple. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. So the devil needs people to propagate his agenda. Yeah. God needs people to propagate his agenda. Yeah. We are here. Everything here costs money. Costs money. It's not free. Hmm. So when you start wiring your mind to understand that, see, God can partner with me. It starts growing. But when you start like, no, why would people be buying jets? You will never buy jets in your life. <laughs> there, it's, it's not a cost. And people will buy jets. There's nothing wrong with it. There's I was in a it. session December and it was really just people I could see. So I said, um, people that want to be very rich, yeah, please raise your hand. And some hands went up. And there was one particular young guy there. His hand was down. I said, why is your hand down? He said, see, because I don't want to commit sin. I know oh, that there are some money that would... I said, yes, that's why I wrote this book for people like you. Because there are gifts that is inside you that you would never manifest. Yes. Because of this kind of mindset. mindset. And people would never be blessed. Hmm. There are captains of industries hmm. that because they believe that they cannot manage money, they are not fulfilling potentials. Thank and you. you are crying that the government <laughs> is not producing jobs. <laughs> Meanwhile, you are the one that should produce Thank you. the job. Wow. Um, now that we've all gone Christianity and religion, uh, it, w when you were talking, I just even remembered all these people that have, as I said, immense influence and power when it comes to money. Their intent was never to be billionaires. Their intent was to change the world and make the world better. And in trying to change the world, they became billionaires. So even God says, don't think like the pagans. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Where shall we live? He said, your father knows that you need those things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What exactly does God intend for you to do here? Go and do it. All these other necessities will be added. So you can, it keeps emphasizing on that mindset, that mindset. If we're all a me, 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 me mindset, 
the billion dollar idea would never be given to you. It would never come to the people. You would only attract, because you said money is like a current, you only attract ideas that fulfill what is in your mind. If your mind is not global and it's just on basic necessities, those are the only things you would see. But the moment it is global, believe it or not, when those ideas come, you don't have to try and figure out how we to get sorted out. I assure you, a lot of the people whom God gave all these ideas, they didn't know how it was going to come to pass. But somehow, somehow, because that idea was given to them, God was obligated to make sure that that thing comes to pass because the world needs the benefits of those ideas. So my, as, as we round up, you can see when we're enjoying ourselves, is there any hope for people who have this kind of mindset and that mindset needs to change? What exactly would you say in a, just a few minutes, what would you say should be the first step they should take in changing their mindset if they want money to be attracted to them? This is masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> in a few minutes, okay. So as the book said, where is the money? I tell people the value is in you and I'm not confused about it because God did not create any useless person. Hmm. You might not see yourself that way now, but that value hmm. is inside of you. And I've worked with several people, including myself, hmm. to say this is it. Where you are right now is not where you would always be. And it's a journey. So how do you change your mindset? The number one thing for me is a no-brainer. Read. 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 And when I say read, a, a number of people come to me and are like, I don't like to read. It's because oh. you like to read. <laughs> so I would say it differently. Find your learning styles. Hmm. If you cannot read, you can listen. Hmm. If you cannot listen, you can watch. Find something that works for you. Watch the gate inside of you. The, the things that are coming into you. Because what you believe right now is what people have put into you. And speak because this is church, so I can <laughs> preach very well. You're I can allowed. teach <laughs> very well. So if Jesus, our Jesus, did not joke with reading, with books, right from when he was young, you, why would you think that you will go far hmm. without knowledge? Wow. Because every time the, I've said some very glowing stories now, I spoke about um, Shubomi, I spoke about Funke, I spoke about Moabudu, I spoke about myself. If you're listening to it, it sounds like I know you just did it. Life will come and challenge you. Hmm. If life can challenge Jesus, if the devil can challenge Jesus, how much more you, when the stumbling blocks come in, what is going to stand for you are the things that you know. Wow. That's why the Bible would say it will bring to remembrance. You know, we, bring, we quote all these scriptures, but we don't internalize it. You need to read, read about people and different people have different peculiar situations. I want you to be able to take something in, in the little time I have. Look for people, as Cadmus said earlier, there's nothing new under the earth. Go and look for people that have passed through Beautiful. your journey. Beautiful. I read about Rockefeller, the first hmm. billionaire that America produced. Yes, yes. At some point, Rockefeller was so poor that when they were taking class picture, the photographer removed him from the picture that don't come and spoil class picture. My goodness. That was the story of Rockefeller's life. But those were men that knew how to turn things. He said he kept that picture because he kept telling himself that I will afford the best photographer in the world. So that thing that you call your shame, let it be your foiling point. Hmm. Tell yourself that in this same place where I have seen shame, many will come to learn it. Joseph was telling his brothers, he said, that which you meant for evil, God, God meant it for good and yes. for the deliverance of many. So I don't care whether you are in the farthest part of the world listening to me. You can't, your roof is leaking. You can't get food. Understand that 
in that same crisis, there are advantages. The Chinese word for crisis is translated, um, for crisis is translated opportunity and danger. Wow. So for every crisis, there are opportunities. And the only way, read, study, any way you know how to read, please read. Thank you so much. Well, this is part one. Part two is going to come up next week. So please tune in to the Quantum Life exclusively on Covenant Radio Life on the Airwaves. We are studying a wonderful book called Where is the Money by Mrs. Adepoju Oluwa Timeninu. Until next time, God should continue to be a blessing to you and you shall continue to be a blessing to others. Take care.